Hello fellow introverts and welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you survived the solar eclipse. Today, I'm going to introduce you to seven of the scariest creatures from Native American folklore. From the cannibalistic Wendigo and the flying head to skinwalkers and owl witches, these Native American monsters are the stuff of nightmares. Now, Native American folklore, like many oral traditions around the world, is rife with captivating tales passed down through the generations. Among these stories, you'll find terrifying tales of Native American monsters that are distinct to the many tribes that inhabit the Americas. Some legends may be familiar thanks to depictions in mainstream pop culture, though these portrayals often stray far from their indigenous roots. Take the Wendigo, for example. This giant, skeletal beast from the Algonquin-speaking tribes of North America stalks the woods at night during the cold winter, searching for human flesh to devour. The Wendigo most notably inspired Stephen King's novel Pet Cemetery, but the old indigenous tales of this creature are far scarier. And, of course, there are monsters from Native American folklore that you've probably never heard of, like the legend of the Skajumakt, also known as the Ghost Witch. These evil sorcerers are said to rise from the dead and hunt the living. While these creatures have distinctly native origins, some have characteristics that are similar to monsters from European lore. For example, the only way to kill the Skamachekt is to burn it with fire, a common weapon used to fight witches in other cultures. So, while each of these disturbing Native American monster tales holds its own cultural significance, they also contain common threads representing the shared vulnerabilities of the human experience. And what's more, they're all absolutely terrifying. First, the eternally hungry cannibal monster, the Wendigo. Among the most feared and well-known of the Native American monsters is the insatiable Wendigo. TV fans may see the depictions of this man-eating monster in popular shows like Supernatural and Grimm. It has also been name-checked in books such as Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Crake and Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. Generally described as an ice-covered cannibalistic man-beast, the Wendigo legend comes from the Algonquin-speaking tribes of North America, which includes nations such as the Bequat, Naragasset and the Wampagong of New England. The story of the Wendigo is also found in folklore of the First Nations of Canada, such as the Ojibwe and the Chippewa, Potawatomi and Cree. Some tribal cultures describe the Wendigo as a pure evil force compared to the Boogeyman. Others say the Wendigo beast is actually a possessed human who was taken over by evil spirits as punishment or committing misdeeds such as selfishness, gluttony, or cannibalism. Once a troublesome human is turned into Wendigo, little can be done to save them. According to Native American folklore, the Wendigo stalks the woods during dark winter nights looking for human flesh to devour and luring victims with its eerie ability to mimic human voices. Disappearances of tribal members or other forest inhabitants were often attributed to the doings of the Wendigo. The physical appearance of the monstrous beast differs between legends. Most describe the Wendigo as a figure about 15 feet tall with an emaciated, haggard body signifying its insatiable appetite for heating on human flesh. In his book, the Manitus, First Nation Canadian author and scholar Basil Johnson described the Wendigo as a gaunt skeleton that gave off a strange and eerie odor of decay and decomposition of death and corruption. The legend of the Wendigo has been passed down through generations of tribes. One of the most popular versions of this myth tells the story of a Wendigo monster that was defeated by a little girl who boiled tallow and threw it all over the creature, making it small and vulnerable to attacks. While the vast majority of alleged Wendigo sightings occurred between the 1800s and the 1920s, claims of a flesh-eating monster man still surface around the Great Lakes territories every so often. In 2019, 
Mysterious howls allegedly heard by hikers in the Canadian wilderness led to his suspicions of that horrific sound were caused by the infamous man-beast. Scholars believe that this Native American monster is the manifestation of real-world problems like starvation and violence. Its link to the possession of a sinful human may also symbolize how these communities perceive certain taboos or negative behavior. One clear thing is that these monsters can take different shapes and forms. As some Native American myths suggest, there are certain lines that people may cross that can turn them into these hideous beings. As Johnston wrote, turning Wendigo can become an ugly reality for someone who resorts to destruction in the face of adversity. Next, probably the second most well-known, the shape-shifting Native American monster called Skinwalkers. Skinwalkers are animalistic humanoid creatures chronicled in the centuries-old folklore of various Native American tribes of the United States Southwest, most notably the Navajo, Pueblo, Apache, and Hopi peoples. It is one of many shape-shifting monsters from Native American legend. Skinwalkers are typically described with a beastly and deformed body, a marred albeit humanoid face, and blazing orange-red eyes. But the origin of these creatures vary among tribal cultures. Some traditions say skinwalkers are powerful medicine men who succumb to the temptation of using their abilities for evil. Other traditions claim that the skinwalkers are the punitive form of any man, woman, or child who commits a deep sin. In any case, the myth of the skinwalkers is well known among indigenous communities. These Native American monsters are described as incredibly powerful, nearly immortal. They can only be killed with a bullet or a knife dipped in white ash, a bit reminiscent of the shapeshifter from popular cultures, the werewolf, and its weakness to silver bullets. However, among indigenous cultures, it is reportedly taboo to speak aloud of skinwalkers. Navajo culture dictates that talking about these supernatural creatures is bad luck and makes their appearance more likely. Hence, members of the Navajo Nation are reluctant to speak about skinwalkers to non-natives. Nevertheless, the greater public caught wind of the terrifying Native American legend in 1996. The Deseret News published a story about a Utah family that has been traumatized by chilling events around their ranch, including the unexplained slaughter of their livestock, which were found dead with strange mutilations. The witnesses claim to have seen an unidentifiable animal that is remarkably agile and made hellish sounds. Strange things continued on the ranch after the family moved. The property is known as Skinwalker Ranch and is a notorious hotbed for paranormal activity. Since then, skinwalkers have become increasingly ubiquitous in pop culture. The terrifying events associated with the beast are depicted on HBO's The Outsider, based on a Stephen King novel. And investigated in the Secrets of Skinwalker Ranch, a documentary series on the History Channel. It's important to note that public understanding of these Native American monsters is inadequate due to the understandable reluctance of Navajo people to discuss them with outsiders. One reason, as Native scholar Adrien Keen contends, is the misuse of such lore by non-Native writers, which can have a harmful impact on Native communities. Rowling is completely rewriting these traditions. Traditions that come from the particular context, place, understanding, and truth, wrote Keen about the author J.K. Rowling's clumsy infusion of Navajo legend into an offshoot of Harry Potter. These things are not misunderstood wizards, not by any stretch of the imagination. Next, the Inuit sea monster, the Kualupalik. Underneath the hard, thick ice and deep and frigid waters of the Arctic region, there lurks a terrifying sea monster that preys on children. According to indigenous lore, this Native American monster is known as the Alupalik. It is a well-known mythical creature of the Inuit, who inhabited the freezing tundra of Alaska, Canada, and Greenland. These sea-dwelling creatures are typically described as half-human sea monsters with elongated fingernails and green, slimy skin. Most terrifying about the creatures of the legend is their habit for luring unsuspecting Inuit children into its icy lair beneath the water. The Kualupalik is identifiable by its eerie distant hummings 
as it sings from below the surface. Sometimes, it is said, Qualo Pollock will gently tap its fingers on the ice's surface in hopes of attracting nearby children who may follow the sound onto the ice. Inuit elders have passed down the terrifying tales of flesh-eating Qualo Pollock over generations. They say that if the Qualo Pollock happens upon a child playing by the edge of the water, monster will kidnap them and place them in an amautic, a parker worn by Inuit women with a built-in baby-carrying pouch. Thus, the Inuit children will be brought back to the creature's lair underneath the sea, where it will keep the child forever. It is said that the Kuala Pollock depends on children to keep her young, keep her skin green, and her hair special. She is half-human and half-sea creature, and as you grow old, she grows younger. While the Kuala Pollock is depicted differently in various versions of Native American myths, these monsters are generally thought of as feminine creatures. In this respect, the myth of the Kuala Pollock somewhat resembles the terrifying legends of the sea sirens, famous among western seamen who spoke about half-fish maidens that lured men to their watery deaths. The myth of half-human sea creatures dragging children underneath the ice may send a chill down a grown adult's spine. Still, scholars believe that the legend was born out of practical need to keep Inuit children away from the dangerous ice. In Inuit culture, storytelling is an essential part of parenting, with many myths and legends supposedly designed to help make children behave. Now, many Inuit children who grew up hearing about these sea monsters from their elders are keeping the legend alive through books and animation. Next, the Cherokee's Horned Serpent, the Uktina. Many cultures worldwide tell tales of giant serpents or dragon-like creatures secretly lurking deep in the wilds. Various serpent beasts can be found in Native American folklore. Among them is the myth of the Uktina. The legend of Uktina originated among the Cherokee Nation of the southeastern U.S. It is essentially a dragon-like horned serpent with wings, but some depictions are far more unnerving. The 19th century anthropologist James Mooney observed the Cherokee tribe in the western North Carolina described the Uktina in his 1992 book, History, Myths, and Sacred Formulas of Cherokee. The 19th century anthropologist James Mooney observed the Cherokee tribe in western North Carolina and described the Uktina in his 1992 book, History, Myths, and Sacred Formulas of the Cherokees. Writing, Those who know say that the Uktina is a great snake, as large around as a tree trunk with horns on its head and a bright blazing crest like a diamond upon its forehead, scales glittering like sparks of fire. The blazing diamond is called Ulanatsuti, transparent, and he who can win it may become the greatest wonder worker of the tribe. Still, it is worth a man's life to attempt it, for whoever is seen by the Uktina is so dazed by the bright light that he runs toward the snake instead of trying to escape. According to Mooney's research, the only warrior ever believed to have successfully retrieved the blazing Uktina diamond and lived to tell the tale was, and forgive me, I am going to butcher this name, Agana Unitsi, nailed it. <coughs> the diamond he had obtained was allegedly still in possession of the East Cherokees during Mooney's visit to the tribe. However, as a white man and the outsider, the researcher was not allowed to see it. According to the Cherokee legends of this Native American monster, the first Uktina was made long ago, when the sun sent a sickness down to kill the people of Earth. A man was changed into a horned snake and sent to kill the sun. He failed, but the rattlesnake tried next and succeeded. The Uktina was so jealous and angry about his failure that all the people were afraid of him, so they took him away from the tribe and hid him. In other tales, these horned serpents are born out of envy and anger and represent the darkness of the underworld. Legend has it that the Uktina lives in isolated dark places like gorges, caves, and lonely passes in high mountains. Generations of Cherokee passed on the knowledge of possible Uktina dwellings to the members of the tribe so they could avoid these dangerous spots. Several stories tell of this monster a Native American lore. Among the most famous stories about the Uktina is the battle between the fierce serpent beast and the giant mythological birds of prey that possess impenetrable metal feathers. 
As the legend goes, a pair of birds had been terrorizing a local village by swooping down and grabbing the villagers, dogs, and children to feed to their young. The tribe's medicine man devised a way to reach, reach the eggs and throw them out to the river, where the Uktina immediately devoured them. Enraged that their young had been eaten, the mythical birds killed the giant serpent. Other Native American tribes tell of enormous dragon-like serpents, including the myth of the Quetzalcoatl and the, the feathered serpent mentioned in the ancient lores of indigenous cultures in Central America, and the Ogopogo, which is a serpent water spirit that is found in the folklore of Canadian's West Bank First Nation. Next, the giant owl witches of Native American folklore called Tata Clea, owls hold significant meaning in Native American culture, and many tribes have their own myths related to these mysterious nocturnal birds. The Yakima, that lived at the border between what is now Washington and Oregon states, say that the Tata Clea were giant owl witches that once roamed the plains at night looking for people to devour. They most enjoyed feasting on children and could mimic the language of the tribes to lure victims. As Yakima tribe member William Charlie told American farmer and honorary Yakima L.V. McWhorter in 1918. These people, the Tataklea, were taller and larger than the common human. They ate every bad thing known, such as frogs, lizards, snakes, and other things that Indians did not eat. They talked the Indian language, and in that way, might fool the Indians. There were five of them, all sisters. But at the last creation, they came up only in California. Two were seen there. They were women, tall, big women who lived in caves. It is said that these Native American monsters were eventually wiped out and their cave dwelling was blown up. Though it is unclear of how the faithful mission was accomplished, according to the traditions, the owls that we see at night originated from the eye of one of the Tataklia sisters who drowned during the last battle. While the Yakima tribes speak about the Tataklia, other indigenous cultures have their own mythologies linked to the owl. In Choctaw mythology, the owl deity is known as the Ishkiniki, or the horned owl, which is believed to hunt men and other prey at night. Its blood-curdling screeches are a bad omen for sudden death. In the tradition of the Seminole, located in present-day Florida, it is the Stikini, which is essentially owl beasts that can shift between animal and human form. It is believed their shape-shifting abilities come from vomiting out their own souls, blood, and internal organs, which they hang up high in the treetops so they cannot reach, be reached by man or animal. Similar to how skinwalkers are regarded in Navajo culture, the stickany is considered so terrifying that it's taboo to speak aloud of these monsters among the Seminole, as it could attract their presence. Then among the tribes further south, near Mexico, exists the legend of La Lechuza, Massive, owl-human hybrids with the faces of older women. They are believed to be shape-shifting witches, and their favorite meal, you guessed it, all children. No matter which myth or what tribe, it's safe to say that the mighty owl monsters are ones to watch out for, according to these Native American monster tales. Next, the flying head monster of the Iroquois, the Canonstitonis. Among the most ancient Native American myths are the tales that come from the Iroquois, a confederacy of tribes who inhabited the northeastern part of North America. The Iroquois Union formed so long ago, in fact, that historians have no idea exactly when it happened. The Iroquois Confederacy, who in their native tongue called themselves Hadunisa Sawney, was made up of six tribes, the Cayuge, the Mohawk, the Onaidi, Onodaga, the Seneca, and the Ascararoa peoples. As they shared resources as a united front, these tribes also shared many stories. One of the most terrifying legends of Iroquois culture is the myth of Anand Sistani Ties, or flying heads, or exactly that, disembodied heads with fiery eyes and long tangled hair. These heads floated through the air and hunted for humans to eat. Because the Iroquois culture came from so long ago, the exact origins 
are also lost to time. There are several variations of the story of how these cannibalistic flying heads came to be. In some iterations of Native American folklore, it resulted in a violent murder in which the victim's dismembered head came back to life and grew enormous in size so that it could seek vengeance for its tragic death. Others believe they were simply primordial monsters with the uncontrollable urge to feast on human flesh. Perhaps the most poignant version is the Native American legend is the one in which it says they came from the brutal betrayal within the unknown tribe that once occupied the territory Sakandaga Lake in what is now present-day New York. A terrible famine befell the tribe, prompting the young men of the group to propose that the tribe travel to look for a new home. This idea was shot down by the elders, who believed that the famine and harsh winter were a curse put upon them by the Master of Life, and was best to stay put. The elders warned that the curse would follow the tribe wherever they went. The disagreement broke into conflict. The young men murdered their elders by decapitating them and throwing their dismembered bodies into a lake. Unbeknownst to the young warriors, the elders' heads came back to life. The heads merged into a single giant floating head with wings and talons. It was covered in black hair. A monstrous flying head killed the young men as well as the rest of the tribe. The Native American legend is certainly bow chilling, and these giant flying head monsters were not exactly invincible either. The stories told by the Seneca peoples include the tale of a widow who defeated flying head monster by feeding it burning coal. And finally, the Native American ghost witch monster, the Skagidomatic, witches appear in the myth of cultures all around the world, including Native American folklore. Take the Skagidomatic, or ghost witch. These monsters are mentioned in legends of the Wabanaki, the confederacy of tribes that occupied the lands of modern-day Maine. The Wabanaki which roughly translate to the people of the Dawnland, still exist today. They are survived by four large tribes of Maine. The Maliseet, the, the Mi'kmaq, the Penobopscot, and the Passamaquoddy tribes. According to the shared lore of the Wabanaki culture, it is said to have merged when an evil sorcerer refused to stay dead. The undead magician came alive again at night taking the shape of a ball of light. They stalk the open woods for unsuspecting victims to eat as the only way to maintain their immortality and feed off the blood and flesh of humans. One story that was obtained recounted a gruesome tale of a native man and his wife stumbled upon a grave of the dead magician. According to this Native American legend, the couple took shelter in the grove where the dead magician had been buried. The wife, rightful, at the site of a burial high above the trees, insists they camp somewhere else. The husband refused and went to sleep. By dawn, after listening to a strange gnawing sound that persisted all night, the woman went to wake her husband up only to find that his left side had been gnawed away and his heart was gone. She sought help in the village nearby. The residents did not believe her at first, but when they took the dead magician's remains down from the tree, they found traces of fresh blood on the corpse's face. Despite their undead condition, they allegedly still retain their sorcery. They can put curses on humans with the powerful magic. The old native folklore also alleges that some of the humans are more vulnerable to the ghost witches than others. Mainly, they are said to stalk the unsuspecting people during times of grief, such as at a funeral. And it is said that these Native American monsters also prey on people who get lost or separated from their group as they walk through the woods. Interestingly, there are a few characteristics that are similar to other creatures in popular culture. These undead witch monsters need to feed on blood, as vampires do. They can only be killed with fire, a common method known to be effective to dispose of witches in European lore. Despite these similarities, the mythical monsters of Native American folklore are wholly distinct to the different tribal cultures which persisted and survived over centuries. And all these dark tales point to humanity's deepest fears, which makes them timelessly terrifying. Now that you've learned about a few of the scariest Native American monsters of Native mythology, tell me what you think. And again, I apologize. I am not uh, versed 
even looking up the pronunciations and having them spoken to me via Google, I'm still, man, I, I am insanely sorry for butchering those names. Um, and with that, I will stay out of the woods. I would stay off the ice and don't let any undead creature eat you. And with that, I will talk to you nerds later.